Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Triple A Playoffs here in the Nashville Stars franchise. Before hopping into the offseason, we will cover the entire Triple A Playoffs in this episode where we get to see a bunch of prospects of ours and see maybe a better outlook on them going into next season. We have a couple of top prospects in this first series. We will face the Rochester Red Wings, who are the affiliate, AAA affiliate of the Washington Nationals. They have a top prospect in Brady House. He is the number two, two prospect in baseball. He hits three in their lineup. He is an excellent shortstop. And the Nationals are rebuilding. They are in a full rebuild just like us. They finished with a bottom five record in the MLB. And what do you know? Two teams in the bottom six are in the AAA playoffs. So I guess it's a good outlook for both teams. We have one top 20 prospect in Kerry Doss. So we uh, really have two top 50 prospects in this opening round here. And we will put some of our best AAA players on the mound here and some of the best players on the field as we move Kerry Doss down and Kurt Sombrano will also be moved down. Here is Damian Houston, one of our best pitching prospects in the organization. He gives up a hit to start out the AAA playoffs as we have home field advantage here in round number one. Here is the next batter up to the plate, hitting a line shot to center field, and that one will be caught by James Wood. Brady House, the number two prospect in baseball, comes up to the plate, ground ball up the middle on a hit and run, and it will just be a ground ball. As that brings up two outs, Drew Mendoza to the plate. This one hit hard up the middle, and a nice stop by our second baseman that time, thrown onto first base, and it's going to be a base hit. Tyson King playing second today. Heston Jerstead to the plate. High heat, and he cannot catch up with that one. It's strike three. And Norfolk gets out of the first inning there as it brings up a lot of good hitters to the plate. Jimmy Sandoval, who was our third-round pick last season in our first-year player draft, as it brings up Kerry Doss, one of the best hitters in AAA this season. He gets a low-hanging uh, curveball, and that one will just be a chop at a third base, and it will be the third out of the inning. We move on to the fourth inning now. Here is Doss again, hard ground ball up the middle. That one's knocked down by House, but it will be a base hit here. And Kerry Doss gets his first hit of this series, bringing up Taylor Trammell, still in the organization. Hit and run is on, 3-2 count, two outs, but nothing doing through the first four innings for your Tide. And now that brings up Donovan Casey here in the fifth inning, facing Damian Houston on the mound, and that's going to be his 69th pitch. That is in the dirt. Say, facing the next batter, some heat over the middle of the plate, and he can get that heater up to about 98 mile an hour at times. Is now with one out, they execute the hit and run perfectly. A hit to right field, and the runner will go from first to third. So now they have runners on the corners here as it brings up the top of their owner, J Jeremy De, De La Russa at the plate. He hits one deep to right field. That one is gone. Rochester will strike first here in the fifth inning. A three-run dinger that time, and they take the three-run lead. That one was absolutely smoked, too. We had no chance of getting to that one as we move on to the bottom of the fifth inning. Here is Isaac Plumbo at the plate. He hits one to the left side. That one does get through the infield, so now we have a runner on first. And we'll see what we can do with this because we have not manufactured many runs today as it brings up James Wood, a hard ground ball to third, a good play by the third baseman, thrown on to second, and the throw won't be in time for the double play. But a nice stop there by the uh, third baseman there as it brings up Wilbis Santiago to the plate. He hits one hard up the box. That one gets through. Perfect, perfect hit on that one. And now we have runners on first and second. The bottom of our lineup, let's see if we can roll it over. Ben Ruda, hard ground ball to the right side, but it is just going to be stepped on the bag there at first. Still in a 3-0 hole here. That brings up Brian Lacker to the plate, one of our top catching prospects. He hits one to right center. That one gets down. He doesn't have elite speed, only 15, but he's going to have a triple anyway, and we start out this inning with a one-out triple. 
Brian Lacker and also Kurt Zambrano are top catchers in our organization. Right behind Jorge Alfaro, they will have a chance to compete for a roster spot next year. Gary Doss comes to the plate, and you can't leave one over the middle for him. That one's deep to center field. It will score one, and we are officially on the board. And look at Gary Doss rounding second pretty hard. He tries to go back, and he will be safe at second. Trying to get a triple that time. Doesn't have great speed. It's just about average. And that will be the uh, game for Tim Cates. He pitched pretty well through six innings, but started to get ripped right there. They bring in Sam Clay out of the bullpen to face Taylor Trammell, and he goes deep to right field. This one's back at the wall. It hits off of the warning track. Trammell with better speed than Doss will round second. He will head to third. The throw is not in time. It's a three to two game off of the RBI triple by Taylor Trammell. Remember, he is still in our organization. I'm still developing him. He's still in his young 20s. Isaac Plumbo to the plate. He hits one hard to the right side. All three guys in the middle of our lineup come through with an RBI here. It's now 3-3 three to three as Isaac Plumbo, remember, was our MILB hitter of the year in our organization. As it brings up James Wood, he smokes one. That one cannot be corralled by the center fielder. It was a hard hit ball, and this inning is still going with one out. Here is Tyson King, our top third base prospect. He hits one hard down the right field line. That gets down. It should score two. We'll see. We will send the runner in the throw to the cutoff man. The throw will be to third. Tyson King forces the throw all the way to third instead of the throw home. And it's going to be a five-run inning. Is this inning it's still going, bringing up Jimmy Sandoval to the play? We roll over the lineup, and here is Sandoval with the hard hit. Grounder up the middle, but a nice backhand play. Throw on to second base. We'll get the lead runner. On to the ninth inning now. This is going to be Charlton Triola on the mound, trying to get us a save in this one. A fly ball to Tremel, and he runs it down. Tremel is actually a pretty good fielder out there. He's got an accurate arm. As it brings up the last batter of the game, it will be a ground ball to first, and Norfolk takes game number one. After being down 3 0, we get the win here. Kerry Doss goes three for four in this game. Also, two doubles, an RBI, and a run. He gets player of the game. Our player of the year, more than likely, comes through in the clutch. We move on to game number two. They have Mick Abel on the mound, who is one of the guys that one of you guys said in the comment section down below to go after at the trade deadline. I did look at him, but he wasn't great, and I, I didn't think that you know what we could give them would be worth it, to be honest, and he's already been traded once. Uh, to I think he's already in the Nationals organization. What am I saying? We go on to game number two, and it is not pretty. Rochester just hops on a big lead here, and they go up. 10 to 1 here in the seventh inning. We're just trying to get through this game now. And uh, Mick Abel is still on the mound for Rochester. They end up winning this game 12 to 1. It wasn't even close. Matthew Thompson, who we traded for in season one, started that game and he just got shelled. As we move on to game number three, this time we put Bryce Jarvis on the mound and Rochester goes up 3 0 early. But Norfolk comes out with a uh, nice. Solo home run from Kerry Doss, and then we start to come back and tie this ball game up at three apiece in the fifth inning. Then we take the two-run lead off of a uh, Nick Williams two-run home run in the sixth inning, and we end up extending the lead to four runs. And now we just start to pile it on. It's now eight to three, and it looks like it's Merrill Petit, who got moved down for this playoffs, ends up coming in for a nice little relief there. And now we take. The two to one lead. And I just got to say, there's like a glitch in the game where when the MLB season ends, they automatically move people up and down. So our team looks kind of different a little bit. This now that the first and second game is done, but we will continue this series and see if we can close it out. You'll see a couple of the players that were at the MLB level down here, like Yasmiro Petit. And that wasn't me. That was the game doing that. So here in game number four, here is James Wood after a carry Doss single to start out this game. He does go down looking. Ben Bracewell on the mound for us, one of our prospects in our organization that I'm not sure we'll ever have 
a chance at going to the show. If he does, he will probably be a relief pitcher more than anything. But he's looking good, facing Brady House here in the fourth inning, and that's an inside fastball, and he gets the number two prospect in baseball to swing and miss. That's his fifth strike out of the game. And now we're into the fourth inning, and Norfolk getting out of this one. Rochester and Norfolk in one of those games where neither team can get going on offense. On to the sixth inning. Here is Kerry Doss at the plate, though. He hits one well to left field. This one's gone. Kerry Doss, our number one prospect in the organization, such a good hitter. And to, just to give you guys kind of a uh, look at how good he is, actually, in the AL and NL Futures game, they put him at the number three spot in the lineup. That was not me putting him there. That was the game. That just shows the respect that they have for his bat. Isaac Plumbo comes up in the top of the seventh inning. He walks to start the inning, bringing up Wilbis Santiago. He hits one to the left side. This one will get down and left. So now we have, a man, have men on first and second. One run lead here. Nick Williams to the plate. He's been a... Uh, pretty pretty good hitter at AAA this year. He hits one well to the right center gap. That one gets all the way to the wall. It will score two, and Nick Williams makes it a 3-0 game here. Trying to close out this series also, and James Wood looks like he is fired up there, and Williams just absolutely crushes this one to the gap, and it looks like we could close this one out after that two RBI triple. And it brings up Justin Wood to the plate. He hits one well to the right side, and that one will be caught. I said triple. That was actually a double. As now we bring in Pablo Moya, who was our pitcher of the year last year. So we have some pretty good prospects down here at AAA. On to the ninth inning. It looks like we have the shutout going. The first batter of this inning will pop up to James Wood in center field. James Wood will get a chance to compete for that starting center fielder job at the MLB level next year. I'm not sure if he has the upper hand just because I want to see him develop more, but there is a nice uh, grab over the shoulder by Jimmy Sandoval. Two outs, bringing up Brady House, and that one will be a pop-up, and we will advance to the championship series. Now, this was a, a uh, best of five here in this series, and the next series will be a best of seven. So we will advance on to the championship here. And what a series for our AAA Norfolk Tides. We only gave up three hits in this game. I mean, that was an absolutely great win. And Ben Bracewell, nine strikeouts, no earned runs, no walks, three hits. Amazing. Now I want to highlight how well Kerry Doss did in that round. He hit 615. On base percentage of 706, slugged at 1400 and an OPS of 2100. I mean, the guy is just tearing the cover off of the ball. And if there was any doubt who our minor league player of the year would be, I mean, Kerry Doss is just simply amazing. He is going to be a star at the MLB level when he gets up. He's been our top prospect this entire time. He was one of those guys that came in. He was a potential to start this series. He was the only one. And now we have about, I believe, three or four, uh, maybe three, a potential prospects, including our first-round draft pick here in season number two. So I think we have three total, to be honest with you. And looking at, you know, who we will face, we'll face the Durham Bulls. And they have a couple of actually MLB talent level players. They have some good prospects as well, like Manuel, Manuel Margot. He is uh, at the AAA level for Tampa Bay. They have Michael Waka. They have Greg Jones, who is one of their top prospects. Uh, Vidal, Bruhan, it, Vidal Bruhan is one of their top prospects. Also, he is a very good hitter. And they have Yiman Choi, who is a uh, former MLB player as well, now down at AAA. So we will have our work cut out here in a seven-game set versus the Durham Bulls. And, that, and game one, we will put Bryce Jarvis on the mound. And like I said, some of the roster has changed a little bit because the game manually moves people got down and you can't do anything about it. Uh, so we will see what Bryce Jarvis can do here in game one. Jimmy Sandoval, I want to highlight here. He's only hitting 125 here in the playoffs, but he will lead off this series. This one's going to get hit deep to right field. This one's got carry back to the warning track, and it will knock off of the wall. Jimmy Sandoval will start out the championship with 
a leadoff triple. I wish this was kind of like a one-game championship, but they make it a seven-game series. But Sandoval starts it out great. And now here we go. Kurt Sombrano at the plate here. He gets moved down after that move that the game automatically moves people down. I would have probably moved him down anyway because he played most of the year at AAA. And he comes through with the leadoff uh, RBI single after Jimmy Sandoval uh, starts it out with a triple. That brings up Kerry Doss, who is hitting absolutely amazing, but his first at-bat will be a fly ball to right field for the first out of the inning, bringing up James Wood, hitting 235 here in the playoffs. He hits one well. Oh, this one is going to be deep. Back at the wall. It will be off of the wall, and we will score from first base, and it will be a 2-0 start here for the Norfolk Tides. James Wood coming through. I love our three and four hitters at the AAA level with James Wood and Kerry Doss. Those two guys can absolutely rake. Manuel Margot to the plate now to start out this game for the Durham Bulls, and he will swing and miss as Bryce Jarvis looks good. Here comes Vidal Brujan to the plate, one of their top prospects. Ground ball to short, but an off errant throw. And that is Justin Faith, I believe, playing shortstop right there as it brings up for Proctor. And that one will be a swinging strike. And we get out of the second inning with no damage done. Gary Doss comes to the plate now. 0 for 1 today. He hits this one deep to right field. How far will this one go? Will it get over? It doesn't. It's off of the top of the wall. If that wall wasn't tall like that, it would have probably been a home run. It's a two-out double here. Bringing up James Wood, one for one today. That's a high fastball out of the zone. Will be ball four. That brings up Isaac Plumbo to the plate. He was our hitter of the year in season number one. And this one will be a shallow fly ball, but Margot will run that one down. On to the bottom of the fourth inning. Now in a 2-1 game, Bryce Jarvis facing uh, Videl Brujan again, and he will slap this one to left field, and it will tie this ball game up at two apiece. Bryce Jarvis is the guy we traded for at the trade deadline. We brought him in. He was kind of an older prospect at 25 years old. Still like what he can do, but here he is in the fourth inning in a tie ball game. Now he does get a pop-up. Uh, in foul territory, bringing up Curtis Mead with one out. Chop it a short. This should be two. Thrown on the second. On to first, and Jimmy Sandoval with the hard throw to first will get the runner. And it's now a tie ball game going into the sixth inning. Jarvis still on the bound, though, but in a little bit of trouble. He's a, uh, approaching 100 pitches on the evening, and that one will load up the bases. We have to go to the bullpen, and we do bring in Yasmiro Petit, the 38-year-old. MLB player. We brought him down for the AAA playoffs. I decided to bring him in here, but a hard ground ball. And that one will be fielded by Sandoval, but he cannot field it cleanly. He knocks it down and probably should have been two and maybe could have went home with that one for a force out. But instead, it is now three to two. Chopper to the uh, to first on the next batter. And that one's going to be thrown home and way overthrown. It's now four to two on two errors. Oh, man, yes, Merrill Petit's got to pitch his way out of this one now. Curtis Mead to the plate. He hits one well. This one is going to be in the gap. It will score one. It's going to score two, and it might score all three runners, and it will. Jimmy Sandoval's throw is not in time. It's 7-2. to two. Durham smacks us in the mouth, mouth here in game number one. We'll see if uh, Norfolk can come back here in the seventh. Here is Kerry Doss at the plate, and he hits one well up the middle, making it four to seven. I mean, Kerry Doss, such a great hitter, and I think that he's just going to be, like I said, a bona fide star at the MLB level. James Wood comes to the plate inside sinker, and that one is going to be watched for ball four. Now Isaac Plumbo back at the plate now. He hits one into left field. Will this one get down? And it gets run down by the left fielder. And look at this. They double us up at second base. Kurt Zambrano to the plate now in the ninth inning. He hits one well to left center. This one will be caught by Margot. 
It pays to have an MLB-level talent there in center field for the Durham Bulls. As it brings up Kerry Doss, who is two for four today. One out here in the ninth inning, and he smokes one up the middle. That one will be another base hit for Doss. It will score one. The throw on to third will not be in time. And now here we go with runners on the corners here with one out. Doss just continues to hit the ball well. Three for five. James Wood to the plate. This is a chopper to third, but it gets through the infield. Hugging the line was the third baseman, and for some reason, he wasn't playing his normal depth there. It's an 8-6 to six game. We actually go to the bench here to bring in a pinch runner, bring in a faster runner at first, and it brings up Isaac Plumbo to the plate here with one out. Inside fastball. That will be strike three. Bringing up Brian Moon, who has been in AAA this entire year. I decide to go to the bench and bring in Michael Rock. Michael Rock has been such a good player for us at the minor league level, and then we moved him up to the MLB level. He was more of a depth guy, but a guy that I think will not stick. I think he's just got to be a little better, and to me, he's not the greatest MLB bat. So he comes to the plate here to pinch hit here with two outs in the ninth inning, men on first and second, facing Matt Harness, and he will hit this one deep to left field. This one's back to the wall. It's going to sneak over. It's a 9-8 game here for the Norfolk Tides. And we will take the one-run lead over the Durham Bulls. And how about Michael Rock? Like I said, a guy that I don't think is going to be an MLB bat, but he could be a lifelong minor leaguer for us, can help out our AAA affiliate and help develop these young guys. On to the ninth inning. Here's a tapper in front of the plate, but look at the throw. Just not even close not online and it will be an error and this not even close look at that throw way over the mark and now with a one run lead men on first for or men on second base here and that's going to be a hit to left field and look at the throw james wood will not get that one in in time and it will be a tie ball game here as margot comes through with a hit and it ties the game up at nine apiece no out still in this ninth inning, and a hit down the left field line will move the runner over to third. And that's actually not uh, James Wood. What was I saying? That's actually Nick Williams in left field. As we walk the next batter to load up the bases, giving us a force out at the plate, but bases loaded with no outs. He-Man Choi goes to first, bringing up Vidal Bruhan to the plate. He is one of their top prospects in their organization here. And he gets a pitch right over the middle, and he grooves it. It's over. Walk-off shot there to right field. 13-9 victory here for the Durham Bulls. And they come through with a big-time walk-off. And not a pretty game one here for the Norfolk Tide. We were down big. We came back at least. Michael Rock came in to pinch hit. But our pitching, giving up 12 runs today, just not pretty. We end up losing this game. Remember, this is a seven-game series, so we will see what happens for the rest of this series. But we will get through the entire series here in the rest of the episode. Now, Durham is a pretty good team, but I think it's mostly because they have moved down a lot of MLB talent. So, I mean, we're playing with a lot of our prospects here. They're playing with some of the MLB talent they have. And I did bring in Yasmero Petit out of the bullpen but it's a huge advantage but I think our hitters can definitely beat them still I think it's a good sign because seeing that our uh players like Harry Doss like James Wood Isaac Plumbo guys that might get a shot sooner rather than later to go up to the MLB level get to face MLB level pitching that's a good sign here at this uh championship and here we take the 8-3 lead so in game number two we actually bounce back pretty nicely but hold on Norfolk gives up a few runs here in the eighth inning. It's now a eight to six game, but we do hold on to win it. Pablo Moya gets the win in this one. He's got a .35 whip here in the playoffs. And now we move on to game number three as we are in the bottom of the 12th inning. This was one of the more intriguing games because this is always that pivotal game. Who's going to win this one? Going to extras, bottom of the 12th inning, and we have the top of our lineup up. This is a good sign for us. 
Jimmy Sandoval up to the plate. One for five today. Hasn't hit great here in the playoffs, but still is one of those prospects that's developing. He hits a chopper to third base. That one is going to be a ground ball to third. Kurt Zambrano to the plate now. One for five. He hits one well. This one will get to the gap. It's a hard hit ball by Zambrano. He's got excellent contact ratings. We will see if that can uh, kind of hold up into a good average at the MLB level. He's obviously going to get the shot. I'm not sure if it will be next year because of Jorge Alfaro, but we'll see. Zambrano probably will be the backup catcher, if anything, but if Jorge Alfaro does not resign with us, he could be the starter. That brings up Kerry Doss, who has hit the ball extremely well and somehow misses that inside sinker for strike three. That brings up James Wood. He hits one into shallow center, but it will be run down. And this one will continue here to the top of the 14th. And we do give up a run here. Durham scores one. It's now a 3-2 to two ball game, bringing up Nick Williams in the bottom of the 14th. This one will be a low pitch, and he starts this one off with a walk. Cam Norton to the plate now. One of our prospects hits one down the left field line. This game is not over yet. It gets to the wall. Nick Williams will stay at third. We have runners on second and third with no outs. I did not want to risk it right there, bringing up the top of our lineup. Jimmy Sandoval at the plate. He is behind that fastball. Strike three on the swing. Brian Lacker to the plate now, hitting 238. Hard ground ball up the middle. It does hit the pitcher, and it will score one. So we tie this ball game up, and you know who that's going to bring up. Kerry Doss, our best hitter in the organization. One for five. Does he have a clutch moment in him? Hey, he, and he's going to swing and miss at that. Uh, outside fastball and he cannot catch up this one moves all the way to the bottom of the 16th inning Jimmy Sandoval back at the plate now still a three to three game we are well past 1 a.m. here here is a hit to the right side this one will get through we won't send the runner again and that's gonna bring up once again Kerry Doss with a chance to walk it off no outs bases loaded 3-1 pitch. We'll be inside. A chop to third. This one could be two. The throw home. On to first. It's a double play. Wow. Here we go again. That brings up James Wood. Three for six. We acquired him at the trade deadline from the Padres in that three-team trade. And our future center fielder with a 3-1 pitch. It's outside. And he loads up the bases, bringing up Isaac Plumbo. Two for seven today. And he is not hitting extremely well here in the playoffs. But a one-two pitch will be low. It's a hard hit ball down the left field line. It will score one. And that will do it here in game number three. Norfolk takes the two-to-one lead here. And I initially said this was a seven-game series. I am mistaken. This is a five-game series. So we take the two-to-one game here. And... I believe that we could clinch it here in game number four as we go on to this game. And with really a championship in mind here, Durham takes the 3 nothing lead here in the third inning. Ben Bracewell, remember he pitched well last time, but this time around he gave up four runs. But Norfolk does stay in this one. Manuel Margot is two for three. Michael Rockets to start at second base. Kerry Doss is one for three today. But it looks like we are still behind. But all it takes is a couple of big swings. Kerry Dawson, and James Wood get on base there in the eighth inning, but nothing is doing. On to the ninth inning now. Matt Hartness on the mound, and he gets the save for the Durham Bulls. Videl Bruhan, who is absolutely tearing the cover off the ball here in the championship. He gets player of the game going two for five. And we go on to game number five here. We'll see what the Norfolk Tide can do. Can we clinch this championship here at the AAA level? But we start out game number five down four to nothing here. Michael Rock at the plate. He hits one well to right center. That one does get to the gap. It will score one. Michael Rock with decent speed. That ball just keeps on rolling all the way to the wall. With 73 speed, he will have a RBI triple to get us on the board for the first time today. 
Cam Norton at the plate now. He gets a hanger. He waits back on it. He hits it well, but right to the second baseman. Four to one as we move on to the fifth inning. This is Pablo Moya back on the mound. We pitch him a lot because he is our best reliever here in our organization, I think, in my opinion. As that brings up four, Proctor to the plate now. Men on first and second, bringing it to a 3-2 pitch. This one will be a ground ball up the middle. It gets through. But look at James Wood with the hard throw home. And this will nail the runner at the plate. What a throw by James Wood. I think the runner kind of hesitated at third. He didn't know whether to run right there. He kind of took a late round around third. And that's going to be a great throw by Wood. 4-1 game that brings up Nick Williams in the bottom of the fifth inning. This one will get to the gap. This one will be a leadoff double here to start the fifth inning. And it's going to be a lifelong minor leaguer, but Nick Williams coming through right there. I believe he was once a very good player for the Phillies organization. I, I guess I wouldn't say really good, but he was a guy that they were expecting to do good things. As Michael Waka gets a start in this uh, game. And that's what I talk about with the MLB level talent getting moved down. As we move on to the ninth inning now, Kerry Doss to the plate. He gets plunked on the back, bringing up James Wood. Two for four today. Inside pitch. Ground ball to first. Thrown on to second. On to first. It's a double play. Two outs here in game number five. This could be the last batter here. Isaac Plumbo, outside slider, keeping this game alive. Michael Rock, who hit the walk-off a couple of games ago. This one's going to be deep to left field, and that one is foul. As that next pitch is going to be out of the zone, and it's going to be ball four. So now the tying run comes to the plate. Cam Norton, 0 for 5 today, 3-2 pitch, ground ball to short. It's a chopper, long throw, and it will be in time. Durham goes on to win the AAA championship here versus your Norfolk Tides. We saw some good things in this series, though. I'm not too down about this. Obviously, it's AAA, not the MLB level. We end up with the loss. We did face a really good pitcher, Michael Waka, a couple of times this series, but Still, we got the loss here, and I'm excited for the future of this team. I think that it's going to be something that we can build on, and I think that seeing what I saw from Kerry Doss definitely gives me a lot of happiness and a lot of hope for the future because I'm not going to do anything crazy in the MLB uh, offseason, but I do want to bring in a player that will put people in the seats. The owner does have a demand there, and we will talk about that kind of next episode. Now, Kerry Doss finished the playoffs with a 1,300 OPS, 789 slugging, 447 average, 533 on base percentage. I mean, he was by far the best player at the AAA level. James Wood ended up with a 368 average, 967 OPS, which is excellent. So James Wood and Kerry Doss were definitely our best hitters as uh, James Wood also drew seven walks to carry Doss's six walks, which I think is a pretty underrated stat, to be honest, to get on base. And then looking at the rest of our guys, we did okay. It wasn't anything great from anybody else. But looking at our pitchers, I would say the one guy that did pretty well, I would say, was Ben Bracewell, but he got hit pretty hard in game number four. So that pretty much sucked. But I wanted to show you guys the AAA playoffs and um, really give you guys a good idea of what our AAA uh, talent looks like. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a little different of an episode. A little bit longer, too, but I got through the entire AAA playoffs. There's only two rounds of, game, of five games, so I, it wasn't too much. But I did play pretty much every game that you saw action from. I pretty much played the entire game. So uh, that was actually a lot of gameplay, to be honest with you. But at least I got familiar with with some of the triple a talent so in the off season we will really get into it and like i said try to bring in somebody that's a big talent and we will have a little bit of a bigger budget as well so hit subscribe hit that like button stay tuned let's get it let's go